Hey folks, welcome to the Near4j stream. Sorry uh, for the late start, had some technical issues, but I think we're all good now. So today we're going to pick up where we left off last time working with Gatsby and Near4j. Um, here's the GitHub project we're working on. Let's drop this link in the chat. So um, if you missed the session last time, the recording is available on YouTube here. If you just go to that link uh, in the chat, um, you can see the code and, and see what we did last time. Basically what we did is we created a new project using the Gatsby blog starter. Um, and that uses some markdown files to populate a simple blog using Gatsby. Uh, we took a look at how Gatsby populates that content using GraphQL, took sort of a, a brief look at that. Uh, and then we created this other project that I put in the NFJ GraphQL directory in our repo, which is a GraphQL server uh, for Near4j. So using, make this a little bit bigger. There we go. Using the Near4j GraphQL JS library, we defined uh, some simple type definitions for a Near4j database containing points of interest from OpenStreetMap. So we talked a little bit about how we imported that data in you know, for j using the OpenStreetMap importer. Uh, we used a you know, for j sandbox instance to populate this. So here's where we're connecting to that sandbox instance. Um, and then we configured Gatsby. So if we jump to our Gatsby project and take a look at Gatsby config, we used the Gatsby uh, source GraphQL. Where is it? There it is. Uh, this Gatsby source GraphQL plugin we used to kind of stitch in the GraphQL API that's connected to our Neo4j instance into Gatsby's GraphQL API under this POI uh, field just sort of like a namespace for our Near4j GraphQL API. So what I wanna do this time is pick up where we left off and actually use the Near4j GraphQL API that we've stitched in to the Gatsby GraphQL API. I wanna use that to actually populate some content in our blog. So I wanna show on the index page, I want to show all, I don't know, a list of all of the point of interest, I guess, that we have in the database. And then for each one of those points of interest, we'll create a Gatsby page that has some detailed information uh, about the point of interest. So the first thing we need to do is let's go to our NFJ GraphQL code. We need to fire up the GraphQL API for Near4j that we created. Um, the GraphQ or the Near4j sandbox that we created has probably since expired. Those are um, temporary that live only for uh, for about a week. So I'm going to go to sandbox. Oh, and this is still a we call them hidden use case. Um, you need to visit this specific URL, which I'll post in the chat. This specific URL to sort of unlock the hidden OpenStreetMap use case. And again, the reason it's hidden is just because we haven't created the guide page for it yet. So the, the data is public. It comes from OpenStreetMap um, that we've loaded into Near4j. 
but until we've built the guide content for it, we leave it as hidden. So for now, we need to use that URL to unlock it. Um, okay, so this is spinning up a Neo4j instance that we will then connect to here from our GraphQL API. Um, let's, let's use environment variables. So instead of sort of hard coding our credentials here in the code, let's use a .env file to do that. So I'm going to create a new file that we'll call .env. So here we're going to define some environment variables. So we'll say neo4j URI, neo4j user, and neo4j password. And now that our sandbox instance has spun up, go to connection details. Here's the Neo4j URI. That's the Bolt protocol IP import. Neo4j user, that's just Neo4j, the default database user. And here's the password. Okay, and then let's use the .env package. Um, I think that's this one. Yeah, so this is just a handy package that allows us to read these .env files and set those values as environment variables. So I'm going to go into the UFJ GraphQL project. Uh, npm install .env. And then just like it says in the readme, we just import that and call the config function .env.config. And then down here, instead of hard coding my connection string, this should be process.env. Nfj uri process.env dot nfj user and process.env dot neo4j password. Okay, so let's do an npm start. Type. There we go. And it says GraphQL API running on localhost 3003. Looks like it is. Can we get some data? Uh, point of interest. Give me the first 10 points of interest. Give me name and type. There's unauthorized due to authentication failure. Why is that? URI, user, password. What do you do wrong here? Process.env.nfjuri, nfj user, nfj password. Mm -hmm. Acquire.env. Yeah, what did we do wrong there? Well, here, let's let's log these things to make sure we actually get them. Process env for GURI console log process env nfj user process env j password um, okay so uri user password did i misspell it oh lowercase j uppercase j Uh, 
uh, and I'll have to restart that because our watcher is not picking up changes in the .env file. There we go. OK, so now we've got some points of interest. Cool. I'll take out those logs. OK, so our GraphQL API is up and running. Let's go over to our Gatsby site and start that up with a Gatsby develop. This is going to build the static content for our Gatsby site. Start a development server so we can take a look at it. So that's running on localhost 8000. Here's our blog starter. And then it also starts the Gatsby GraphQL API on 8000 slash underscore 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 GraphQL. And we can make sure that we're pulling in our Neo4j GraphQL API using the Gatsby source GraphQL plugin. OK, so now we're ready to change some of the, the content on this page. And what I want to take a look at, um, so for now I'm going to close these files. And what I want to take a look at is the way that Gatsby uses GraphQL to populate content in the pages that Gatsby creates. And there's a few different ways that Gatsby does that. Um, let's take a look at one way, which is using a static query component. So if we take a look at this index page, so the page that's listing title of the site, a bio, and then our blog post. That is going to be in source pages index. So this is the React component responsible for rendering this page. And if we see here, there's this bio component that's being imported from components bio. Let's take a look at that. And here we see this bio component is pulling in this use static query hook and running a GraphQL query and then rendering some content using the results of that GraphQL query. So this is the first way that, GraphQ, that Gatsby can use GraphQL is with this use static query. Uh, here's a hook. There's also a, another component, um, static query component that uses a different React API. Um, but this hook is the more, um, I guess the more now idiomatic way um, to work with React State. Anyway, um, this is the first way that Gatsby uses GraphQL data. So basically, in any component, we can pull in this use static query hook, give it a GraphQL query, and then render some content. Cool. Um, so let's change this content a bit. So if we look at the GraphQL query, um, it's hitting the site query field, getting some metadata. So where is that coming from? Well, if we take a look at Gatsby config, we can see where that site metadata is being set in this object. So let's change this. So the title is um, 
what do we call this? Central Perk. Um, the author. Uh, we can use myself as the author. That seems fine. Uh, description of the site. This is a travel guide to Central Park using Neo4j, Gatsby, and GraphQL. Uh, I've got some social stuff. We don't have a URL yet, so we'll leave that as is. Cool. Okay, so if we go back now to our index, uh, or rather, what do we want? We want the bio. Go back to the bio component and take a look at the GraphQL query that's used to populate this. Because we changed that data in the source. We can see it's changing here. Instead of the, this author information, instead I want to just show the description for the site. So if we go to the GraphQL API, um, we're starting at the site query field and then site metadata we have what the title, the author, I don't really care about. Uh, description is what I'm interested in though. So I want that description field. So let's add that to our GraphQL query. Description and then um, let's just skip rendering this image. We'll fill in a central perk logo or something later. Uh, and then here, written by in the author summary. Yeah, we don't really care about that. Instead, data.site.description is what we want to render. Um, data dot site or dot site metadata. So we need to follow the selection set of our GraphQL query. So the result of the query is passed in to our bio component as data props, the data prop. Um, oh, here, grabbing author, social, and Let's grab description here so we can just say description. Okay, that, and we don't need to link to Twitter. So we can remove that too. Okay. Cool, so we've seen how to use this use static query hook to pull in content from the Gatsby GraphQL API and render that um, in a React component. Let's take a look at the second way that Gatsby uses GraphQL. And we'll find that in the Gatsby node file. So here, um, and we can look at the Gatsby documentation for the Gatsby create pages API, I think that's what we want. Right, so here we're using the create pages API in Gatsby to query for here all of the blog posts that have been 
in this case, created uh, as Markdown files. So it's using uh, a plugin to parse those Markdown files. And that's what here we're showing one post for each one of these Markdown files. Um, in this case, ordered by date. And then for each one of those blog posts that comes back from that GraphQL query, we're calling create page, defining the path uh, as the slug. And here, let's, let's run this query so we can see actually what we're getting back. All right, so basically we're getting back for each post a slug. So that's going to be a component of the URL and the title of the blog post. So when we call create page, we're saying, hey, create a page in Gatsby, please. The path is just going to be the slug Uh, we're going to render this using the blog post component. So we'll take a look at that in a second. That's just being uh, imported here from source templates blog post. That's just a React component. Uh, and then the context object. So what do we, what else do we want to pass into um, the blog post component when it's being rendered? Well, we want to give it the slug and this previous and next, which here we're just uh, finding the previous and next post here in this array that comes back from the GraphQL query. Cool, so we create those pages um, and then they get rendered by this blog post component. So that's the second way to use GraphQL in Gatsby is with this create page API. And what we're going to do is we're going to modify this to create a page um, for each point of interest in our case. So rather than using content for Markdown, we want to use content that comes from near for j uh, In this case, each one of these points of interest, we want to create a page that will then have some detailed information about that point of interest. Eventually, we'll have a map that shows where it is. Uh, we'll find some photos, see if we can pull in some other content along the way. Um, before we modify this page um, and get into the weeds, let's just take a look at the third way that Gatsby can use GraphQL. And for that, I'm going to look at this index page. So within pages, we have a 404 and an index. So index.js, that's, that's this page, um, which we looked at briefly. We were sort of just going down here to the bio component. So we saw that in the bio component, it's using um, the use static query hook in that component to query the GraphQL API that Gatsby is serving. Um, another thing that we can do is export a page query. And in that case, that page query is a GraphQL query that defines content that we want to then pass into in this case, the index page, and that comes in in the data prop into our, what's essentially our page component in this case called blog index. So here we've defined, let's run this. Here we've defined the query that's going to populate the data that renders this index page, and we can run that in graphical to see, yep, we get the site metadata, then we're using that markdown plugin 
to parse our markdown files. And in this case, we're grabbing um, the title, the date, and an excerpt and a description for each post, which we're showing here. So what we'll do is we'll modify this to show um, to show every point of interest. I, I think what we'll what we'll want um, eventually is maybe just render a map of Central Park, and we'll just render these points of interest as like points on the map, and we can sort of like click in and explore it that way. Um, but for now, I just want to render like one of these links uh, to each of the detailed posts uh, for each point of interest. Um, so we'll take a look at that in a second. Hey, Mustafa, thanks for joining. Glad you're liking the tutorials, cool. Okay, so Gatsby config, we looked at um, bio, we looked at index, we'll come back to. What we wanna do is jump back to Gatsby node. And here, let's change this page to tell Gatsby to create a page for each point of interest. Uh, so let's first start off by changing this query. Let's switch to graphical. And first, let's grab all of our points of interest. Uh, let's just grab them all from the database. So we'll start off at the POI field. Remember, that's in Gatsby config. That's the field that we said we wanted to sort of mount our Near4j GraphQL API under the POI field. So that's where that comes from. So sort of a namespace, POI. Um, and then we want every point of interest. And for every point of interest, we want uh, the name, the type. What else do we have? Oh, right, we have, we saw how we can do some routing. Uh, we won't use that today. The tags, um, probably don't want to display that, um, or we probably don't need that um, for just creating the pages. Um, we do probably, however, need the node OSM ID. So this is, this is what we'll treat as the slug so we'll, we'll use this as part of the URL. So every point of interest has a unique ID, which is this node OSM ID field. And we see here we get an error in Gatsby, in the Gatsby GraphQL API that says, int cannot, be represent, cannot represent non 32-bit signed integer value. Um, if we go to the Near4j GraphQL API directly in query node OSM ID, we see that we can get those values. Um, and this, this is a bit interesting. So the GraphQL spec is actually a bit uh, vague about um, handling in this case, these would be longs. So these are 64-bit um, integers rather than 32. Um, it sort of depends on the system, whether or not you want to be able to handle those long values as integers. Um, looks like Gatsby doesn't let us do that. So let's change this in the Near4j GraphQL API. We'll jump over there. For our type definitions, we defined the node OSM ID as a integer field. Um, and this, is, this actually works out better. Let's explicitly say, hey, this is an ID required field. Uh, and then in the database, Actually, I'm not sure if we need to actually change those. 
do strings or if GraphQL just sort of treats those um, IDs as strings. Let's refresh. Yeah, let's so treat that as a string. Um, okay, so now I think we need to restart Gatsby to pick up that change. Gatsby develop. There we go. So now, um, because we said those are ID fields, um, they're sort of treated as strings. Um, for serialization. Okay, cool. So back to Gatsby site, Gatsby node. So to create each page, really all we need is the name and the OS node OSM ID. So we'll, we'll replace that query here. Um, okay, so then post is not going to be result.data.all markdown remark.edges. Instead, it's going to be data. You can see in the, the result here, following this shape. So data.poi.point of interest. So that's going to be this array of objects. And then we do a for each. So for each post, uh, defining the previous and the next, and then calling dot node. Well, we don't need that dot node. The previous and the next is just going to be the object. So we don't need the call dot node here or here. And then when we call create page, the path is going to be just the post dot node OSM ID. Node OSM ID. Component, we'll still use this blog post component to render it. We'll need to make some changes. Um, and then this context object, the slug is going to be node OSM ID still the previous and the next here. So that's, um, I don't know, we may have broken this. Oh no, it still shows it. So that's um, here, the previous and next. So we can sort of paginate through our points of interest uh, blog posts. Okay, and then we have this on create node handler that um, is using the create file path from the file system plugin, which I'm just going to comment out because I don't think we need to worry about that. OK, that I think is going to break a bunch of things. Um, yeah. There was an error. In index, yes, that has broken, uh, so we need to fix that. But let's first fix the blog post component. So now we're saying, OK, I want to create a page in Gatsby for every point of interest that comes back. So for every one of these, I want to create a page. And I want the URL for that page to just be slash um, slash the OSM node ID, so this this scheme here. And to render that page, I want to use this source templates blog post component. Um, so let's take a look at that. So source templates blog post. And 
if we take a look at this, we can see it's defining a page query. Um, in this case, this component is past the slug. So it's then using that slug to look up the detailed information about that blog post. Um, we can run this. Uh, instead of using, oh, I'm going to find the variable in here, I guess. Uh, slug. You know, is there one new beginnings? Ah. Unexpected. Unexpected token. Very, very goals. Slug. Well, API is not running because we broke some things. Can we run, can we get it back? Gatsby develop. So I think when we make changes to Gatsby node.js, we need to reload the Gatsby build. And I know, I know we broke some things, that's fine. You can complain, but do we have the GraphQL API back? Yes. And then arguments fields. Oh, right, because we are no longer populating that uh, in Gatsby node when we create the page. OK, that's fine. Um, we broke that, but that's OK. We're going to replace that query anyway. Uh, I just wanted to show that this what this GraphQL query returns, uh, like basically, it's giving us the content for the blog post. Um, but we're going to replace that with our own query. So what's that going to look like? Uh, well, we know we want to use this slug value to look up a point of interest by node OSM ID. Um, let's, let's just hard code one in here. Let's grab one from the database. A point of interest for oh the pool is that an actual swimming pool I don't know okay here's a node OSM ID so let's just stick that in there for now so for point of interest um, what are we gonna want we're gonna want as much detailed information as we have to render. Um, so we're going to want the name, the location, latitude and longitude. So we want to show that on a map. We have some tags. We have the type of point of interest. Uh, we don't want to include the routing. So ah. So the trouble there is it's treating this as a string because we said those were ID fields. Um, so let's change those in the database from integers to strings. Uh, so for every point of interest, we're going to set p.nodeosmid equal to cast those to a string p.nodeosmid. Yeah, for every point of interest, set the value of the node OSM ID property to that property cast to a string. That should work. OK, now I have my very detailed information here that we got from OpenStreetMap. 
Um, we don't have any tags for this one, but it tells us that the pool is water. Um, okay, great. Very helpful. Uh, okay, so that's kind of all the data we have for now. Um, oh, let's, right, let's instead of hard coding this, use the GraphQL variables. Oops, syntax. Uh, so we need to name the query something. Uh, how about POI by slug? And this is going to take a GraphQL variable called slug, which is of type non-nullable ID, and we're going to use it here in that field argument. Switch back to new beginnings. I don't want that. There we go. Okay. So we can copy this, drop this in here. Okay, so now when we render a blog post page, we get passed in um, the slug because we set that in the context object here when we called create page. So though if you're wondering, that's where the value uh, for that slug variable comes from. Okay, so what we need to do now is update this to render data based on data that we actually have. So we have name, type, tags, and location. So let's modify this. So the post is going to be um, not data.markdownremark. We have to follow this structure based on the selection set of our GraphQL query. So data. POI dot point of interest, um, and this this is an array um, because this could potentially match. Even though we're using an ID here, um, the generated query fields in the FJ GraphQL JS um, don't know that we're using an ID field, so it treats that as something that could return an array of points of interest. So let's grab the first entry. We should only we should usually only just have one because it's a unique ID. This node OSM ID value is a unique value. Okay, then the site title, that should be fine. Previous and next, that should still be fine. Location should be the same, title should be the same. This SEO component, I'm guessing that's setting like the the meta tags. Um, instead of post.frontmatter.title. Um, so post now represents this object. So when we refer to post, we're talking about this object. So what would this be? Post.name, description, uh, post.type. Then we've got a header, post.name we'll use for the header. Um, then we show the date. Um, we don't have a date. We can show post.node, show the ID. And then here, this is where it's setting the HTML content um, for the blog post that comes back from that Markdown plugin, which is quite nice, but we don't have that. Um, we do let's have a paragraph. We do have uh, post dot tags that we can show, which is um, an array of strings. So the tags are kind of hokey for now. We'll, we'll fix that in a second. Um, 
the tags right now, if you look at our GraphQL API, tags is, is yeah an array of strings. We don't have them for everyone. Um, and right now it's just the keys because the these tag nodes have kind of arbitrary key value pairs from OpenStreetMap. So for now, we just pulled in the keys. Uh, so because it's an array, we can, uh, what did that join? Just to add um, commas between them. Uh, it's an optional, so we need to Make sure we don't try to call dot join when it's undefined. Okay, cool. And then the footer include this bio component. That should be fine. And then here's where we're linking to the previous and next. And the link is going to be just previous dot OSM node ID and previous dot name next dot OSM node ID and next dot name. Okay, I think that should be good. What See any errors? Not on this page. So, um, let's be is restarting. Is it restarting? Uh, maybe we need to fix that uh, error in index before we can render one of these, perhaps. I'm not sure if we're not able to render the index page. I'm not sure if it will still build all the other pages, but we'll find out in a second here. Uh, I think no. Okay, so let's fix that next. So. I think we got everything in our blog post template. We jump over to, um, nope, not that index. Uh, pages index in Gatsby. Okay, so here, remember this, this component um, is exporting a page query, which means that when this page gets built, this GraphQL query is going to run, and then the results of that will be passed into the component as the data prop. Then we can use the results of that in the page component. So this query, this is gonna be pretty similar to the query that we ran to get all of the pages to build. So it's going to be POI, point of interest. I guess the difference is we'll bring in what we need to one uh, to link to the detailed sort of blog post. So in this case, we're, we're treating that slug as the node OSM ID. So we'll need to include that in our GraphQL query. Uh, and then we'll need to include the name and the type. Um, I think that's all that we're going to need for now. Um, here they're ordering this by date of the blog post, but we don't really have anything to order it by here um, since we're describing all points of interest. I guess since we, we, know, we know what we really want to do is uh, show these as markers on a map. Let's just go ahead and include latitude and longitude in the query now for all of these. So really what we wanna do instead of just showing a long list of these is show a map that we can click on and get more information on.
Okay, so we run that query, and now in the data prop, oh, we also need to include the site title. That's a good point. So site, site metadata title. Do we use any other site? Site title, just site title. Okay. We'll include that query field. Okay, so site title, uh, posts are going to be data.poi.point of interest. So this array again. Uh, site title is fine, SEO, that looks fine, bio, that's fine, and then map over all of our posts. Um, we don't have a node. Instead, I guess we just want that object. Uh, so we can call it node. That's fine. So basically map over all of our posts. Node becomes the value of each one of these post objects. Um, the title is node.name. Uh, uh, key. So in, in React, when we do these map operations where we're generating uh, elements that uh, when we're iterating over an array or mapping over an array and creating an element uh, for each item in the array, React typically wants a unique key for each one of those elements. It can identify for performance reasons as it um, renders the shadow DOM that it has. So this we can use node dot node OSM ID, that should be a unique, a unique value. Then in the header, we link to, so now, so what we're doing now, since we don't have our index page up, what we're doing now is showing for all the points of interest, here's the name of the point of interest as a link that we can click on to go to the detailed page. Um, so for each one, the link is going to link to the node OSMID and title, yep, so name of the point of interest. And then we show the date. Um, I think let's, let's just show the name of the point of interest. So we'll delete that. And then we'll also delete this section here where it's showing an excerpt from the blog post. Okay, I think we should have something to look at now. Cool, so now, for some reason we have a lot of points of interest called pitch, I'll have to look at that, but, okay, now we have this big long list of points of interest from our EFJ database, and if I click on one of these, it takes me to a detailed page. Looks like we have an error in our blog post template. So let's figure that out. Um, cannot read site metadata of undefined. So it's trying to show us the title. Uh, oh, but we don't include that. We need to include that in our GraphQL query. So that is site, site metadata title. Um, what did we do wrong there? Site, oh, it's a lowercase d, like that. So that 
it's rebuilding our pages now. Okay, and if we refresh. Cool, so now we can view all of the points of interest in a list. We can click on one to get detailed information. Um, we don't have a whole lot of detailed information. We have the tags. Um, we also want to show a point on a map using the location. We'll get to that. Um, but then we, we have this next link that we can click to. Uh, why doesn't that work? It's not something I can click on. Uh, what's going on there? So link. Hmm, is that not, so that's an anchor, radius.osm node ID, doesn't have a href, why is that? Node OSM ID. Oh, it's node. Node OSM ID, not OSM node ID. So let's try that again. Cool. Oh, and we've appended. So the, we want the link to be, I guess, root. So we'll say slash, and then concatenate the node OSM ID. See, we were adding that to the current URL, which is not what we wanted. So when that rebuilds, we'll make sure that works. And then we'll see what we want to do next. OK, cool. So now I can kind of paginate through these. Cool. And you can see some of these we don't have tag information for. So um, I'll have to find other sources of of info. Okay, so there's more data in the database here. These tags, um, we're just bringing in the keys. So there's a value here for artist name, type of artwork. Um, some of these link to the Wikipedia pages. So this Robert Burns statue has its own Wikipedia page. Okay, let's, let's see if we can find it. Um, if we go to Wikipedia, Robert Burns Central Park statue. A bronze portrait statue in New York City. Yes. Cool. So, so these are the kind of things that I want to explore pulling into our GraphQL API. So because we know uh, there's going to be a Wikidata ID. So we could query the Wikidata API with the ID, or this I think is going to be the ID for the Wikipedia page that has this information, which this is all stuff we want to include in our travel guide. So we'll see how we can include that in um, as well. But for now, what we need to fix is we look at what we're returning for tags from our Neo4j GraphQL API, it's just a list of strings that are the keys for all the tags. So let's return the keys and the values so we can display a little bit more information. 
Okay, so not in Gatsby site, if we go to NeoJ GraphQL JS, index.js, and if we take a look at our schema, here's our point of interest type. So with NeoJ GraphQL JS, the types that we define in our GraphQL schema map to, that's a bit too big, I think, map to node labels and properties in the database. So name, location, type, node OSMID, those are all properties that are stored on the node. Then we, we can also traverse relationships using a at relation directive. Let's take a look at the database. So this is more clear. So let's grab a point of interest. And if we traverse out, from Walter Scott, we can see here there's this Walter Scott uh, point of interest node has a outgoing tags relationship to an OSM tags node. And if we click on this node and look at the properties, we can see here that we have these arbitrary properties. So artist name, artwork type, name, date, tourism, those kind of things. Those are those values are, are the tags that come from OpenStreetMap. And they're kind of arbitrary. They're not defined. So if you look at, they're not defined ahead of time. So if we look at the pond, we can see that its tags are different. Um, so this these tags depend on what sort of point of interest we're working with. So we could, in our schema, define something like this, where we say the tags field on point of interest is a array of tag objects. And it is defined. like this, and then we define a tag type. So we could do this, um, and then NeoJ GraphQL JS would know, oh, okay, so you're on a point of interest, you have a tags, which is a field that is defined using this at relation directive, so I'm going to traverse out along outgoing tags relationships to get to this uh, well, this would be an OSM tag type since that matches the OSM tags label on the node. So, okay, so I'm going to go that, traverse this tags relationship to find this OSM tags node. But then that's where we run into some problems because GraphQL has strict type safety. We kind of need to know the property values, what are the keys and of all the properties uh, and define those as fields on the type. So we don't want to do that because we don't really know what those are going to be. So instead, what we've done is define the tags field using a cipher schema directive. So the cipher directive allows us to bind this field to a cipher statement. So now when we are at the Walter Scott point of interest, if I request the tags field, we execute this cipher statement, uh, which in this case says traverse out to a OSM tags node and return the, just the keys. So the keys of all of these properties. So right now we're not getting the values. Um, so let's fix that. But we said that they're kind of arbitrary. So how can we represent that in GraphQL? Well, what we'll do, we'll create a type tag that has a key field and a value field. And we can also define computed object fields using the cipher schema directive. Here we just defined a computed uh, scalar field, but we can do 
object fields as well. Um, it looks like this looks like we have multiple relationship types in the data. So we go from a point of interest along a tags or along an associated. So I'm just going to take the relationship type out of here. So basically follow any relationship type from a point of interest to an OSM tags node. And then just instead of returning the keys, what I'm going to do is um, unwind over the keys. So iterate over that list of property keys. And I'm going to return an object where the key is the value of the key property uh, is whatever that key is. Uh, so it could be artist name, artwork type, et cetera. And then the value is the value of the property. And we can alias that to something, it doesn't really matter, but that looks nicer. Okay, so we'll save that, make sure it restarted. I think it did. Let's see if that worked. So now tags is an object field, so we need to grab the key and the value. Cool, so now we have for the tags field, we have a list of key value pairs with some more detailed information now that we can include. And because previously I was just following this tags relationship, but we also have these associated relationships. So now, now it looks like we're getting some data where we had nulls before, so that's good. Cool, so question from the chat. Um, in the case, the tag type would not be navigable, right? Assuming later on you'd like to find other related objects to tag. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. So um, let's say that we wanted something like um, POI's point of interest. Let's say we wanted something like this on the tag type, where we now want to go from any of these points of interest that we've ret returned. For any of the tags that we've found, now we want to find other nodes that have the same tag. Well, because of the way that we've defined this tag using the cipher directive, we don't really get that behavior out of the box. So um, if we were using a relation directive to go to all those OSM tag nodes, we'd do something like this. Um, and then your GraphQL JS should be smart enough to, to figure out the query uh, to do that. Uh, but because we're sort of projecting that object using this cipher statement, um, we don't get now this traversal behavior uh, as part of NFT GraphQL JS. Um, I think we could define a custom resolver uh, that would then do this part of the traversal for us. I think that should work. Um, but in general, yeah, that that's where things get kind of messy. I, I try not to use cipher directives to return object fields. Um, if I want to then do a nested selection on that object field here, tag is just a sort of simple container to hold key value data. Uh, I'm not really thinking of it as representing an OSM tags node in the database. 
So yeah, that's a that's a good point that you bring up. This this is kind of a, a special case because uh, we want to be able to get around the uh, rigid GraphQL type system using uh, the sort of arbitrary key value pair representation of our tags. Yeah, good point. Uh, realize now is more general question. I'm sorry for turns an object. Not really what you're showing. Yeah, so I, I, I think the, you know, the, the question comes up a lot, um, or at least I see this in, in some, some schemas where we're using Cypher directive fields when we really should be using uh, at relation fields. And if it's, if it's sort of a, a natural traversal where you're traversing a relationship, you typically just want to use those at relation fields. There, there's a little bit, I think, in the documentation about this. Um, docs. Um, do, do, do. Oh, here we go. What am I looking for? The guides. Uh, this one, uh, scheme and design. So this page talks a little bit about when, when we should use relation directives and when we should use cipher directives. Um, yeah, any any time we have custom computed logic, that's when you want to use the cipher directive. If it's just following a traversal of the graph, you should define those typically with relation directives. Um, okay, so let's see. Is this yep. Cool, that works. Okay, so now what we wanna do is go back to Gatsby and anywhere that we pulled in our tags, instead of showing this list of tags, the tag keys, now we can show the actual detailed information, the values for these tags. So that's going to be in the blog post template. So the first thing we need to do is update our GraphQL query. Tags is now not a scalar. It's an object that has key and value fields. And here's where we're showing them. So instead of just joining the array together, let's create um, an unordered list. And um, what can we do here? Maybe map over these, I guess. Um, so, post.tags, remember this is, this is an optional field. So map over this array and return a list item that has the key and the value. Uh, oh, I think we want our key here can be the index. So every, again, because we're iterating, we're mapping over an array, generating an element, we should add a key prop that has a unique value. Okay, and it looks like, looks like Gatsby needs a restart to pick up the changes to our GraphQL API. So let's restart that. Get an error. Go 
the tags must not have a selection. So it still doesn't like um, let's refresh graphical. It still doesn't like this. So I don't think it picked up the change to our GraphQL API. I think Gatsby maybe caches some of this. So I think, do we do Gatsby clean maybe? Yeah, there we go. So that deleted the cache. So now if we do Gatsby develop, that will rebuild. So now I think it will look at our GraphQL, our Neo4j GraphQL API, uh, do an introspection query to pick up the updates there. Let's let that run to rebuild. Um, while we're waiting, let's add, let's make this, let's make the key bold, get stand out a bit more. We'll um, eventually we'll have to take a look at CSS and styling, um, but for now, we'll just bold that. Okay, and let's restart. So we go to a detailed page. Cool, there we go. Now, if we go to our detailed information, some of this looks good. Object, 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 what is that? So we're getting some, some detailed information here. So we can tell that this fit screen helic is a statue created in 1877. It has a Wikipedia page. That's great. Um, but then what's this object, object, object stuff? Uh, oh, because I'm I still have this here where we're joining. Yeah, so we're I'm still calling uh, join on post.tags, but now because tags is an object, I get that um, object uh, representation of it, which is not very useful. So let's remove that. Okay, cool. So we've got some detailed information. Remember, we also have location data here. So we have latitude and longitude for each one of these. Uh, pitch, to figure out what these, what the pitch thing is. Uh, oh, is this a bunch of tennis courts? Maybe this is just a bunch of individual tennis courts. Then imagine there's, oh yeah, baseball fields. Cool. Um, I think that is probably a good place to stop for today. Um, so we made, we made some progress. I will push this code up to GitHub um, and the recording for this uh, will be linked in that readme as well. So you can follow along. Um, just to, to kind of recap what we did today. Um, so we looked at the different ways that Gatsby uses GraphQL. So we looked at the use static query hook. We looked at the create page API, and we looked at the page query, uh, like for example, this uh, that we used in the blog post template, the page query method, where the page exports a GraphQL query, and then the results are passed in uh, to the data prop. So we looked at the different ways that Gatsby uses GraphQL uh, to render content, and then we populated our Gatsby site with data from Neo4j, from the Neo4j GraphQL API, uh, and we updated that Neo4j GraphQL API a little bit to include more detailed information on tags. Cool, so that's it for today. Next week, I think maybe we'll take a look at how we can fetch some more of this detailed information. Uh, so for example, 
where we have Wikipedia and Wikidata links, can we pull that content in as well and render that? Um, let's look at pulling in images and look at showing a map with these different points of interest. Um, and then after that, we'll take a look at routing. So how can we route from one of these points of interest to another? But that will be um, that will be for future sessions. So thanks everyone for joining today uh, and hope you can join again next week. Um, so I'll see you then. Cheers.